What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. This is your first time here. Welcome. Uh, be sure if this video supports you in any way that you like and share it with someone that you love and feel free to subscribe so that you can receive all of the upcoming videos we have going on here. So we're going to get into this solar eclipse new moon that's going on in Taurus today. It's actually exact in this moment. Well, maybe like 30 minutes ago it was exact. So we are right here underneath um, the umbrella, the entrance way, the doorway. I should say we've walked through the door of this new moon energy. So before I get started, um, YouTube will only just be sharing tarot videos here. Uh, I will be, of course, <laughs> doing the tarot readings. And um, if you are interested in working with me in any way, whether it is through tarot readings, hypnotherapy, or any type of conjure work, wanting to get connected and aligned with um, what is of you when it comes to magic, when it comes to uh, your folk, right? Because a lot of spiritual work has to do with where we come from, our culture. So that's what we're doing over there on Patreon. And each tier is something separate. It is a membership now. So yes, do join us over there if you are interested in that. So we are going to talk a little bit about the current energy, this new moon energy. So the new moon is in Taurus. Um, this has all to do with our possessions, beauty, pleasure, our senses, okay, our resources, and how it is that we go about making money on our own, you know, um, our own sense of income, our sense of self-worth, our values, and how we are aligned to that. This is also, this also has a lot to do with our intuition, right, and trusting and allowing things to take its time to run its course, because, Taurus is really all about the buildup, slowly getting the job done efficiently and effectively in a very peaceful, beautiful way. Think like Empress card energy. You know, she she is the giver, but she is also the receiver. You know, she is the she's the high priestess who became the wife, basically. Um, Granted, some people see the empress as um, somebody showing up in a third party situation and all that other stuff, you know. Um, but that can also be high priestess energy. Anyways, so with the moon being in Taurus, it is in a really good place here. It's exalted here. So that means it is operating at its beyond its efficiency, it's able to really get things done, place the order it is that's needing to get placed in a grounded way without having all the emotional chaos that can come with the moon being in its home sign of cancer, <laughs> you know, because um, that, that moon and cancer energy can, can bring a lot of lunatic energy, right? And that is, that comes from a, a lack of grounding, a lack of being able to um, really see things clearly, right? Not really recognizing what you're feeling and how you're feeling and where you're feeling it, right? And just emoting things, you know? So, okay, y'all gonna hear my son in the background. So, um, yes. So with this energy, it was, let's see. It was in a sextile to Mars, which is in Pisces. So this is a great energy for creativity, for getting things done, initiating like any type of idealistic plans, any type of dreams it is that you've been having, like any type of artistic adventures, endeavors. My bad, y'all. <laughs> um, any type of artistic endeavors and 
really taking action and initiating that, right? And feeling confident in that, being able to really see things very clearly of what steps need to be taken, what needs to be done. Because Taurus is all about like methodical energy, you know, being very practical and um, taking one's time, you know, plants do not grow overnight. Taurus is an earth sign. So there's a lot of nurturing taking place here. Um, it's also, we may be in this space of recognizing uh, what we may not have been aware of before that may have been affecting our health in some type of way and getting a clear understanding on that so that we can do what needs to be done so that we can nourish ourselves in the way in which it is that we need to nourish ourselves. You know, that's going to support us moving forward. Okay, so... Also, what else did we have here with this moon? That was the only um, aspect it was making for real. Hmm. And it's like a semi-sextile semi with Mercury that just moved into um, Gemini today. Mercury will be going into retrograde very soon in May in Gemini. So it's going to retrograde while it's in Gemini, go back into Taurus. And so what's been going on, what we experience the in regards to relationships, decisions, you know, truths, understanding, knowledge, even, um, we're going to see very, we're going to be able to get really grounded in that through the review of Mercury going back into Taurus. You know, and tomorrow Pluto is going to go into retrograde. So, yeah, it is definitely going to be some intense energy for some of us. For some of us, it's going to be some very transformative energy that's going to lift a lot of burdens up off of us. And we'll be able to see the start of that once the moon and Pluto come into a, a trine. Okay, so the north node that's in Taurus is trining Pluto right now. And with that, that's bringing a lot of transformation of getting us, putting us in this space of being able to uh, initiate new karmic walks and routes in, in regards to um, our lineage, in regards to uh, our ancestral line, you know, in regards to our life and, and how it is that we go about living it and making sure that this that what is coming forward in the future is going to be in alignment with um, our highest values, with uh, what it is that's going to work dynamically for everybody because Uranus is also in Taurus and that is all about the collective, right? In a very humanitarian stance, having this very detached sense of unconditional love for others and being able to show up and support them um, in their needs, right? It's kind of, we can look at it as charity, but not so much. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, that's all I'm gonna talk about with this, with this energy here. I would say um, it's a great day to rest with this new moon. We may not, I mean, it just depends on where you at. You may have a lot of energy, you may not have a lot of energy. Whatever it is, it's right for you right? It's, it, we all feel these things differently, you know? So don't, if you go and you read something or you listen to somebody's video and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be, they said that this energy is this, this, and this, and I'm supposed to be feeling this kind of way. Not necessarily. It's not, it's not the same for everybody. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get into this pick a card here. And the first stone we're going to do with stones, the first stone we have here is the Apophyllite. The Apophyllite stone. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. And then we have a peacock ore. Peacock ore. And then we have a tiger's eye. So go ahead and take a moment, you know, take a deep breath and decide which one is calling to you the most. Um, you know, or sit here and listen to all of them if you like. However, you're feeling there may be some, there may be a message in each, 
each area for you. So we're going to go ahead and get into this a pick a card for our Taurus new moon eclipse. And I'll see you real soon at Power One. So for Power One, this is for those who chose the Apophyllite stone. So if you chose Apophyllite, um, you may be awakening to some things. Things are becoming very clear for you. You know, it's a very spiritual, connected, um, oneness feeling kind of time for you. This is very, okay, I'm, I'm, Apophilot kind of gives that energy of beam me up, Scotty. Like, oh, I got to get out of here <laughs> kind of energy. I've seen enough. It's time to go, right? So this is really supporting supporting you and being able to have the clarity it is that you need, um, having even connecting spiritually to any type of practices it is that you need that's going to serve you and being able to, you know, move forward in a, I don't want to say an effortless way, but a way that um, carries sight, right, that, that has a higher understanding, a, a greater sense of knowledge than what's on the surface, you know, so yes, let's go ahead and get started and see what the messages are for you. Okay, one. We're going to roll some dice and get some cards. See what we have going on for power one. Okay, power one. Okay. Keep this lighting right. Okay, so power one, what came out for you is the the south node in the fourth house. The south node of cancer in the fourth house. So this is happening in, in your home life. Um, this is happening in regards to you, who it is that you are, perhaps with something that, that has to do with your mother, perhaps the mother within you, you know, and there may be some deep healing taking place in regards to your what you have inherited in this life, right? Especially any type of past life karma that comes with that, what has been carried forward, anything um, that has been kind of like a stronghold over you that you've been wanting to like integrate within yourself, but haven't really been able to, especially if you're a mom and how it is that you're showing up with that. Um, this can even just be within your emotions, your security, your sense of home, your sense of safety, right? And letting go of old things of the past because it's like, you don't really, when the sound note comes up, you don't really have anything to figure out. You are, it's already very apparent within you, living within you, what it is that you're trying to make happen. And perhaps um, you just haven't been being aware of the fact that these things do exist in you and you're seeing this now you become enlightened awakened attuned to this um, this can also be something about letting go of some old feminine dynamic within you as well so how it is that you go about creating how it is um, that you go about connecting and relating your um how you tend to be or the lack thereof when it comes to your vulnerability and transparency and your openness to how it is that you're feeling at, in the moment at this time, right? This can also speak a lot about the women in your family. So um, there may be some healing taking place in regards to that as well. Uh, some old memories it is that you have or some old feelings or ways of how you go about connecting with women even right on a very personal again vulnerable kind of level like being transparent being very open with things and how they are you know and feeling very safe within that because you know how to do this already it's just maybe you forgot maybe you was focused on your north node and trying to um 
get things together, trying to make sure that you can succeed in whatever it is that you're trying to succeed in. With the South Node being the fourth house, the North Node will be in the tenth house in Capricorn, right? So that is a lot of focus on stability, right? Making sure that you're getting the job done and everything of that nature. And maybe now you were seeing the benefit in your openness that is helping you find success within that, okay? Let's see what other messages we have here. So, what would you like for them to know at this time? So anything that has been harmful for you, um, that kind of keeps you in like this whirlwind or dragged down or held down, when it comes to your emotional nature, that is also changing. It's, it's elevating so that you can be able to um, trust. Even. Like it's still a lot about trust here. What else is here? What are the messages we have here for Colin? Okay. Well, this card flew out. So this is, let me see that. This is the Nino. This is the number 2552. I'm sorry. And the Nino speaks about unity. Okay. And it says astral light and an image of the world and oneness integrates to them in you. So there may be some unity taking place. Again, like I said, there's some something old that's leaving in regards to um. How it is that you go about connecting with people, right? But also, okay. Sorry about that. Sometimes stuff be up here you don't need, right? That speaks a lot about the letting go that's happening. So I said this had to do with unity. It's actually about fortitude, okay? And it says, by plugging up the courage and refusing to be disheartened, confused, or muddle-headed in accordance with your liking, you will get your wish. Someone fishing for compliments may be laying a bait for praise and fit for neither one nor the other. Aningyo represents the discarding of baseness and sacrifice of the lower for the higher. It's a psychic creature who's penet penetrative, penetrative, Swimming movement indicates a heightening of power. The Nino represents knowledge of truth by lifting the mind to a, its original purity. It advises knowing how to fish in the soul, for in doing so, you will advance in the world across an ocean of unformed possibilities. So um, there is also a lot of harmony and balance that's taking place here, right? There may be some sense of justice, of some some sense of justice happening in regard to what it is that you have been um, investing in, right? Because the fourth house is all about investments. It's about home and family life, right? And we're always investing into that. We are always, it's about ourselves. We're always investing into ourselves. Our mothers invest into us, right? So this is having the strength to do that. And in turn, it's paying off because at the bottom of these mermaid cards, Rowan Mermaid came out. This is about wealth. Okay. So with this, the letting go of these kind of dark energies in a sense, um, it can really open up a new door for abundance to flow, for prosperity to be, to take place and be had, you know, really coming in. Uh, and we can kind of look at the South Node as a baseness kind of energy. Like some, like I said, you are already really good at that. It's something you already know how to do. But whatever has been hidden from you in regards to how you've been going about doing these things, especially on an emotional level, right? Trying to carry out your ideas in an old kind of fashion you see that it hasn't been working you knew it already you had the awareness the understanding it's kind of like you took yourself out of this space of duality um of 
you know, being stuck on how something should be or how something should go, right? And now that's changing into balance of this is what I'm choosing. I'm choosing this for me because I need this, right? I need this when I'm at my best. I can be at my best with other people kind of thing because what's facing me is the the moon and Aries in the first house. So this is all about you in accordance to everyone else involved with you. Everyone else who was connected with you, right? On a very personal level, but also on a public level, right? And how it is that um, where you need to be in order for everything to take place in a way that uh, well, we could say serves everybody, but more so that works for you. But coming from a place that is secure yourself, who it is that you are. It's like the old influence you used to have is being upgraded. What else is this here? Or how one. So if there are any um, spirit practices that it's time that you see are just not working anymore, that don't don't feel good anymore, now's the time to uh, relinquish them so that you can do something new, so you can do something different, you know, and we taking time to pause with this and really just, this is like a forced rest, like I'm not thinking about this anymore, I'm not letting, it's like you're no longer allowing the old disappointments, the whole, the old heartaches and heartbreaks to, um, deter you you're not letting that dictate your decision making right you're getting very clear on that because it takes a pause it takes time it, meditation is needed in order to see beyond the conflict to see beyond um this shock <laughs> we can say that it's just happening because we are experiencing an eclipse and that can be shocking for some people, especially when you don't have a lot of self-awareness, right? Cause that this is happening here. It's like, you've been working on your self-awareness. You've been working on developing um, just the vantage point of how you see yourself and how you see life in general. And through that, it's like, all right, I'm taking a break. I'm gonna take a nap today. I'm gonna meditate a little bit and anything that is troubling me what was troubling me, I'm going to let time run its course so that all things can come to light. Things can be seen for what they are and I can move forward. But for now, I'm going to rest. Okay. I'm going to choose me. Um, very in tune okay very very in tune. we have here intuition this is uh queen nandi okay and so this is all about trust this is about um taking the steps doing you know just living even though um you're not, you don't have any proof of what's to come, but you know it's coming, right? It's just about knowing, in a sense, having an understanding. So it's kind of like you feel like you deserve this rest. You feel like you deserve this space to be able to just relax and meditate and kind of embrace and take in the significant changes that are happening for you at this time, the significant release that's taking place for you at this time. Yeah, because Queen Nandi, she says, I am knowing. Her guidance says, you already know. Take a deep breath and surrender to what you know to be true. Trust your inner wisdom and guidance. What is your guidance telling you? Put your hands over your third eye, center of your forehead, and ask, 
If I knew what the answers, answer is, what would it be? Then follow your first instinct. The creator and your ancestors connect with you through your intuition. Trust your internal GPS. The nudges, signs, coincidences are divine guidance. Slow down. Go for a walking meditation. Be present with nature and pay attention. Being present allows you to feel, hear, see, and sense your guidance. All right, so it's already, it's there. It's already within you. Like whatever, like I said, whatever, like, blockages or strongholds that was holding you back from being able to see the truth in the matter um to feel secure even within what it is that you already know that's coming to surface that's coming to light here let me see what other messages do we have here okay. it's just a need for you to make the space that's necessary in order to do so maybe you want to go get go outside and do some grounding put your feet in the earth you know put your hands in the soil even go to the beach walking through the sand what else is here So we have Scorpio here, which is the opposite of Taurus. So this is definitely about your really close and intimate relationships and um, how it is, one, how it is that uh, this is playing a role in your life, but how you play a role within that, right? It's like recognizing your, your significance within a your connections within your relationships again it's a lot about vulnerability it's a lot about transparency and letting allowing yourself to be seen not hiding in the dark not hiding in the shadows right allowing your ideas to be heard and um seeing this very clearly is like you're coming out on the other side coming out of any type of again power struggles that have been going on for you right especially that's been hidden from you what's whatever has been underneath the surface whatever has been in the subconscious mind um these things that is what is changing you know especially when it comes to how it is that you give and receive because cancer in the fourth house is a lot about nurturing it's a lot about um protection you know it's a lot about providing even and and nourishment and care for the self and making sure that these things are balanced and where it is because that within that that's where your wealth has been hidden right if you've been doing too much um clearly you have because you like uh i see what i need to do i'm resting right i'm, I'm going within even to to get the truth of the matter of how it is that I need to go about doing something in the best way for me, you know. So let's see what else is here. The very deep transformation taking place here. When the nodes are involved, is karmic. So this is something that's been going on for quite some time. And in the summertime, it's probably going to be very popping for you it's going to be a um a time to come up out of this four of nines energy so you may be here within this four of nines energy until the scorpio full moon that's on may 16th right because it's like you now that you know you see you're hearing things clearly you tap into your senses here you are recognizing your connection, whether that is to the divine, to yourself, to your family, to your heritage, your lineage, to your ancestors, to your family, your love, your, your significant other, however, your children even, everything is making sense for you. What else is here? Yes, so we have the bouquet of flowers that's coming out for you. Again, so more balance, more harmony. It's a lot of emotional fulfillment taking place here, especially within the family. Okay, 
there's some really good stuff coming forward for your family dynamic, for your family connections even. Um, things are uplifting. Um, you know, it's, it's a good life. It's feeling honored. It is being, feeling seen even, right? It's feeling um, loved and, you know, giving love. It's like everybody can come together and it's just a lot of oneness happening here, a lot of connection, um, a lot of unconditionality within all the things, right? It's kind of like, um, it's very community-based, but for close bonds, close ties, right? Everybody showing up for everybody. At the bottom, we have the wine. So you did this, you created this. Right through spirits' help, they showed up for you and supported you um, in what it is that you could not see. Now you are seeing, and that is allowing you to uh, connect. It's allowing you to thrive. Because when you, when when it's internal, it's interesting. On my Instagram, I'll share that video earlier about some changes that I'm making with. I talked about it at the beginning of the video, but I actually started talking about a lunar eclipse because I don't know, I thought this is a lunar eclipse, <laughs> but it's actually a solar eclipse. So this is external changes happening, right? But I was talking about things changing internally, um, shifting, can't not really being able to be seen. And that is your energy here. It's, it's almost as if the change on the outside is uh, influencing the dynamic, is confirming what it is that you already knew. You're seeing things truly for what they are. One last card for Halloween. Well, we have the waxing gibbous moon here. And this is about gestation, right? So it's like you, there's a birth that's about to happen through this, through the full moon. Maybe some of y'all are getting pregnant, finding out you're pregnant. Some of y'all could have felt like that y'all wasn't able to get pregnant. And now you're like, I'm pregnant. Or maybe somebody's having a, having a baby um, within this cycle as well, right? You're gestating. Some of you may just are gestating with ideas. Y'all you know, about to birth some ideas take throughout this cycle, whether that is from this Taurus new moon to the Taurus full moon, um, come fall, or if it is just from this full, this new moon to the Scorpio full moon cycle. Okay. But there is definitely um, something, there's something being birthed for you and it has a lot to do with you know mothering with your mothers with the women with your family with those close to you those who feel like family and it's very beautiful it's very successful it feels very good it, it's there's no stress involved there's no chaos here right it's it's, it's still is calm it's peaceful it's balanced all right you don't you don't have to go out your way to do anything in, this, in a sense you're very in very much so in this receptive state Okay, but in a receptive state that is coming, the, where the things are coming to you based off of the fact that you've been putting in the efforts to, this is a buildup of energy that has been being cultivated, right? And you've been patient. You are being present and you're recognizing where you need to continue going forward from here with everything. Okay, so how one, I hope that this was helpful for you. If so, let me know. I would love to know um, if this has helped you. If you feel like this can be for someone, please do share this with them so that you can bless them in the same way that you are being blessed at this moment. All right, and time is everything. I will see you next time.
Hello, Pal2, for those of you who chose the Peacock Order. So you guys may be going through a very a strong transformation, okay? There, um, this could be in regards to like your sacral chakra energy. So where it is that you create, you know, your emotional nature, this can be, uh, there could, this could just be energy that has been stagnant is now moving you could be moving actually or getting ready to move planning for a move um this is also a lot about beauty seeing the beauty within yourself maybe you haven't been seeing beauty in yourself in some places and now you are right you're very sure in a sense about what things are for you you know and it's now you're taking the strides to move forward within this very active energy with this because the peacock or is all about the chi all right so this is the kidneys and the adrenals and the reproductive system so perhaps there is something um you're experiencing something in regards to that uh maybe some healing is taking place in regards to that i'm not sure however that's showing up for you um, but we are going to go ahead and get into the divination and see what messages that spirit has for you. So come out, great spirit, ancestors, guides, those who chose the peacock or how to be happening for this solar eclipse, this Taurus moon. What are the messages? south node energy so maybe you want to watch power one if you haven't watched power one because they got south node in cancer so what you all have is the south node in gemini in the seventh house so you are moving beyond old ways of relating or old ways of connecting um there can be some movement happening in regards to your relationships even this can be like a friendship dynamic though this can be those who you work with especially in regards to small business again with the south node this is something that you're already really good at right so maybe you were finding new people to network with or you were seeing the benefit and value of those who are already here and how it is that they can support you and help you and vice versa right how you can confidently show up within yourself as honoring yourself right to enhance the dynamic of the team effort right so this can even be some of you may be um walking away from old relationships that you have been committed to like your commitment style may be changing you may be um, connecting with a more free-spirited nature or you may be creating a new realm for your relationships to operate in in a different way. There may be some new forms of communication taking place. Granted, right? there could be something from the past um, that has to do with legal matters, that there's some movement taking place through this time for you. Uh, like it may even just be some clarity, some, um, some insight, some truth that's coming about that was already known but wasn't being applied all right so now that's taking place this in this could have something to do with uh groups and organizations this feels strongly in regards to friendships you may have some old friendships coming back from the past all right because we have gemini here and mercury is the ruling gemini it's about to go into retrograde so this retrograde may be very significant for you um in regards to your connections there may be an old love relationship coming returning for you that you used to have a lot of fun with all right there were there was a lot of understanding like you felt like you could be yourself within that and and that's returning for you right um and if not that's that's coming toward you so yeah it's a lot of freedom being established here a lot of sovereignty with within your relationships and how you have been going about things right how the movement has been taking place 
again, a lot of truth being revealed. It's like life is about to align or is aligning to your personal philosophy. What you believe that things should be and how they should be, they will become that. All right, but it's going to take you communicating in a way um, that doesn't leave other people hanging. All right, so it's like allowing you to be yourself, but not negating the fact that there are others involved, right? I hope I'm putting that in the right word. So let's see what other messages we have here. What other messages are here for spouses? Okay, yeah, something is birthing. You're attracting something really good in your life, and it has to do with one, the union within yourself, but also um, your union with others, your connection with others. Okay, so duality has been coming up a lot lately in all the readings I've been doing. This is a very strong collective energy that we have going on right now, right? Because a lot of times we make decisions, seventh house, out of what we feel is wrong, what we feel is right. That's dual thought forms, but something can something good only can be birthed out of us choosing ourselves and doing what's right by us, right? We have to be doing right by us before we can truly, really do right by anybody else, right? Because if we're not doing right by ourselves, then it's, it causes a lot of stagnation. It causes a lot of resistance. It's like a, it's a breach of boundary for real, you know? So it's your boundaries are now being presented to you in a way where it's time for you to really show up in who it is that you are. So the mermaid's purse, First, it says you attract good fortune and bring justice to those who may seek to destroy you. Yeah, so there's something going on in the justice realm, paperwork, energy that you may have been dealing with that now you're getting to this point of seeing things very clearly, like you're winning, you, you've won whatever this is. It says, Ex expect a fertile awakening of nature and the beginning of a great new life. What appears to be non-existent may exist because fish growth comes from inside a close, inside the closed cases of the fish's eggs. Frequently cast upon empty beach onto the, by the waves of the sea. Frequently cast upon to the beach by the waves of the sea. A repository of new life, the mermaid purse, represents life energy and mystical healing in all areas of your everyday routine. It is an emblem of immortality and hope in the life hereafter. The long wish held may now be fulfilled. You are aided by time, so make the most of possibilities. Surf the ways of destiny because as sure as eggs are eggs, the tide will always turn with fixed regularity. Yes, so um there may also be a need to pay attention to your routines you may be establishing new routines as well you know there um there's someone here you can trust and wherever it is that there has not been any trust that is closing that door is closing that's coming to an end okay so there's also some strong revelation happening within your group dynamics, within your friendships. Um, you may be seeing who it is that you can really be yourself with and who you cannot, you know. This is here. What are the messages that we have here, Spirit? What else would you like for all to... 
Yeah. Okay. So again, some more truth. This is the mother of nine. So um, there's clarity here. You're very sure of yourself. You know where you're going. You know what you want. You're not really accepting anything less than the latter. There is no room for the latter because what's being birthed is exactly um, what you know to be true right? You know you deserve what it is that you want and how you want it, and that's taking place. It's happening. Um, and anything that has been standing in your way, any type of blockages, any type of, that is literally getting burned up to a crisp by whatever function that is, you know, what that actually is. There's definitely something going on here in regards to the legal system because even at the bottom we have miss robinson and she rules she's ruled by capricorn even under that is the justice card so i don't know maybe it's something that you haven't been aware of in regards to some legal matters that is is coming to light and it may i don't know maybe this has to do with um home matters maybe you signed some contracts before moving um, you know, and maybe, maybe it was people who, uh, felt like you, you couldn't do what it is that you said you was going to do or whatever. And now you're doing that. Okay. You're doing that swiftly and quickly. <laughs> By the end of spring, this is happening in the spring time. Okay. Yeah. Is you in alignment? This is celestial alignment. Let me see that. Her name is Nico Sanzanza. In Nico Sanzanza. She's a number 41. At the bottom, you got cosmic power. You know, so it's like mother, father, God is is being, it's, it's you, it's within you. Maybe this could be with your significant other. Maybe y'all are um, doing something together, moving in together, signing a lease together, buying a car together, getting married. That can even be a thing, right? Maybe you've been single for a while, but you really just, you, you believe and you know you want to be with someone <laughs> and that's happening, you know? And you are in alignment to what that is. Now, those of you who are, it's not about a union and you're separating or you're being on your own. So like maybe some of y'all might be getting a divorce or something. Um, that is in your favor with what is happening here. You know, um, whatever it was that you weren't aware of, you, you see very clearly, this can even have something to do with children. I'm hearing the children, all right? So whatever that means for you. Um, it's a lot of Libra energy here. So maybe this has something to do with a Libra um, in regards to like traditions um, and things of that nature. So celestial alignment says your guidance your guidance says your natural path is to be in alignment with your own divinity. No one can take that from you what they did. No one can take from you what they didn't give to you. How do you want to feel? You think often about what you want, but goddess energy speaks to us in feelings. Celestial alignment is being in sync with the energetic feeling, the frequency of the sacred. Everything that you desire is in that frequency. Match it with your feelings. That energy is God, goddess. Her declaration says, I am always being guided in the right direction. So this made me think about this conversation I was having with my husband yesterday. We were talking about finances and the way in which it is that we go about spending them, right? The place it is that we come from when we spend them, what we spend it on, it establishes the frequency of what we um, have the ability to purchase furthermore. That's what I'm getting here, All right. So it's a lot about how you've been going about investing your 
energy, where you've been coming from with it and what that's been creating, what, 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 the, um, it's like kind of what portal you've created for yourself to be able to be in, what realm you've created yourself to be able to be in, in, in like your ability to spend there. You're in what, what you can, it's like your purchasing value in a sense. So let's see, what other messages are here? Other messages do we have here to talk to? What messages do we have here to talk to? Yes, it's definitely moving. We have Mercury here. So you may be planning with Mercury being here. You could be planning, getting uh, to the details. You could also just be very focusing, very much so focusing on your self-mastery, right? Getting to where it is that you're going and how it is that you're getting there. What I'm also getting is that you're getting really in tune and in touch with uh, this inner magician energy. Right, you're connecting yourself with the higher so that the lower can be manifested as above, so below. Right, you're no longer um, debilitating what your reality looks like based on the physical, but more so of what cannot be seen. Right, you are trusting in the guidance of of the divine, of your ancestors, of your angels, whatever you believe in, okay? And through this, this is bringing good fortune, right? Because again, like I said, you are choosing yourself within this. You don't necessarily have to be leaving behind the people with you, um, but that dynamic with them is definitely shifting. So what are the messages we have here for? What are the messages are here for policy? Yeah, so it's, some, it's definitely it's something about relationships, the family um, is ending, like the, the struggles are ending, um, the chaos is ending, the mental anguish is ending, it's like uh, some deep root work is taking place here that's allowing you to walk through a new door, right, so that this is you, again, being very clear on what where you are your beliefs what you want to receive and what you want it to look like how you want it to feel right and following your senses letting your internal guidance lead you true right this is ending um oh the chaos is ending did i say that did i not say that already or did i say that in the first in how one i don't know either way the chaos is coming to an end okay it putting a knife in it you're cutting it out all right you're giving it to the air to the wind and letting it go on its merry way right because it's it's time to end something is being lost here right but whatever is leaving is based in the alignment that is going to bring you this the bounty that's gonna let you be yourself that's gonna let you be Maybe you've been being very serious off of whatever has been going on. And now um, you see the light and it feels good. What else is here? One more card for how to. Messages for how to. Yes. Yeah, something is changing in the home. Something's changing in the home. We have never hit here. So this is about space, space in which it the space that you're in, whether that is your living quarters, um, 
it may also be a good time for you to clean. Maybe you need to clean your home. Maybe um, you need to wash the walls and wash the floors, right? Get old, stagnant stuff, energy out of the home. Maybe you need to smudge, okay? Um, maybe you are needing to shift the energy. How do you shift the energy in your home? You know, maybe you need to sweep, maybe you need to mop, maybe you need to wipe down the countertops, okay? It's something within your space that's being transformed, okay? With, again, within your home. This is, Nebahed is of Cancer here. She's the sister of Ost. Uh, she's the protectress, the midwife, the guardian of breath, faithful companion and loyal guardian. Again, it's a lot of movement and, and changes taking place. Okay, so um, like I said, there is something changing within the dynamics of your relationships. It may not necessarily be a separation, but more so a, an alignment to self, an alignment to you mothering you. Therefore, it's allowing you to be able to live in the ways in which it is that you want. Right, being in alignment with you allows your life to reflect the alignment that you want to be in, that you want to walk in, that you want to, you know, go forward in. It's a very fortunate time for you. Um, that's coming with some really great benevolent changes that may not necessarily be as easy as you would like them to be immediately, right? But um, tourist season is all about taking your time. We taking our time, we building things right. We seeing what works and what doesn't, we letting go. You know, anything that slows us down more than um, the practical nature of things that needs steadiness, that's going away. I hope I made sense with that. So how to that is your reading. I hope those messages. Uh, support you throughout this cycle and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hey there, pile three. And those of you who chose the tiger's eye. And so if you chose the tiger's eye, you may be focusing on your creativity right now. Um, some of you may be very, I don't want to say necessarily connected like this this tour cycle may be encouraging you to work with your sacral chakra, maybe even your root chakra, okay? And um, really get in alignment with those energies within you so that you can create, move forward, feel secure and safe within creating whatever you create, you know? Um, a lot of y'all might be focused on your money right now. Money just may be the focus uh, where it is that you are at this time okay so um definitely if that is the case uh maybe there is some financial planning going on maybe you are talking with people who can support you in regards to finances maybe it's just your resources perhaps right um and finding new ways to attain resources this could be about your possessions home life kind of things like very practical um, means, resources. This could also be talking about your relationships may have a lot a role to play right now as well and the creating of that. Um, this cycle could also be focused on your, your children. Okay, and where, what that brings to you, where, like, your role within that on some level of depth that you have uh, kind of yet to establish, right? Gain footing in out of not having the knowing it is that you needed to uh, do that. Maybe you are expressing yourself from a very innocent place if this is not about your children, right? And feeling very confident and comfortable within that so that you can really um, be seen how you want to be seen. Tiger's eye has a lot to do with, with being seen, right? There may also be some cleansing taking place. You may be doing some healing with women, women that you love, right? Or women who love you. Either way, it's love there. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we have here for how three. 
of his forest no more. Oh, this energy, y'all got the, y'all's energy is very different from everybody else's. And so what you have here is the sun in Taurus in the first house. Okay, so uh, your beauty, right? Your the beauty of your home, the beauty of you, your bodily health, even um, is is the focus here because we have the sun in Taurus in the first house. So this is happening with you, with yourself, um, with people who know know you. Right, when people see this first house energy, uh, okay, so the first house is initially, this is like the place where people project upon you. You show up and being this person, it's very surface level on the outside, but when somebody know you, they know the depth of this first house, of why it is you showing up like you show up. You know, um, people may be seeing you very mystical, very magical even very capable like it's almost like you got this this sense of grace to you you know pleasantness to you um you come you coming off very stable very grounded even you know like you know where you're going you know what you're doing right uh you may be a little uh you see how my hand's shaking like i want to just be like that but it was like that maybe feeling like that a little bit and with that because what's facing me is Neptune and Aries in the sixth house so what's required is for you to come up with some very creative self-nurturing routines to um, allow you to move through any type of like maybe you have some like unknown random health condition going on right and you got headaches because of it. You got, it may be something in regards to your head. You know, maybe you be having migraines. Maybe sometimes your vision may be blurry, right? Maybe something is wrong with your hearing, right? Maybe your ears begin to stop up a lot or um, you begin stuffy noses or your nose, your nostrils be running a lot or maybe something in regards to do with your mouth, even whatever, whatever that is, right? Because Aries rules the head. You got Aries facing me and you got the house of Aries at the top, right? And it's two strong health energies here, but your vitality is found within you and the self-care and nurturing it is that you give to yourself. And when I say self-care, I don't necessarily mean like being pretty, like that's a thing, sure, whatever. Um, but this is like self-care of, you know, you're going to talk to, you go and talk to somebody because you need to understand why it is that you keep perceiving things the way that you're perceiving them. Uh, you need to talk to somebody to understand why you um, can't really express and voice yourself the way it is that you want, why you're having a problem feeling disconnected from the joy and excitement in your life, right? Or maybe, um, you just meditating, right? Maybe you are uh, spending some time to get very grounded and connected within your body, all right? Maybe you are choosing to eat better even. Maybe this is a season for you to eat lighter, okay? Lightness is a very, this is a very light energy, but it's receptive. And that's where receptivity lies, in the light. Not, not the sunlight, but when things are light, when you unpack the darkness, right? That's where the receptivity lies. When you bog down with a bunch of shit that is um, having you feel sluggish, like maybe you've been like, you you tired, you can't wake up in the morning, you ain't got enough energy for this, for that, for that. Whatever routines it is that you are implementing within your life, they have to be uniquely aligned with you. This is like some energy where you can't be doing nothing that anybody else uh got going on especially when it comes to like your work right you the work it is that you do is otherworldly but it's very aligned with human nature with the self right maybe you're somebody who helped people get connected with themselves on a spiritual level 
all right? You help them get tapped into their senses even, but you can only have the ability to do this because you're tapped into your own. Um, this is a lot about you tapping into your senses, your bodily senses, letting your body speak to you and, and showing you the signs that you need to see of what's going on with you, of how you respond into things as well, because, um, Sometimes we just need to be present. Everything doesn't need a response, okay? Because with Neptune and Aries, it's like the self is very, it's a very mysterious kind of you. You're very mysterious, okay? People wanna know you. They wanna be near you. They wanna be in your presence, Taurus, all right? They wanna have fun with you. They wanna connect with you. They wanna laugh with you. All right, they wanna build with you. They wanna work with you. <laughs> they wanna know how you do you, basically. How you did that? I don't get it. How is that possible from where you were? How you did that? So let's see, what other messages do you have for Kyle three? For those who chose the Tiger's Eye Spirit. So let's just see what you have here. Okay, so first card that we have coming up here is the spotted dolphin. And the spotted dolphin is about happiness. Okay, so it says there is always something positive in the future. So whatever it is that's going on right now, it's best to put your best foot forward so that you can connect with the positivity, right? The good news, the goodness that's coming forward to you in this future life it is that you're moving into that you're walking into right this eclipse is it's literally changing you people seeing you different it's a solar eclipse and the sun is here all right so people are seeing you different they're seeing your happiness they're seeing um you feel good they're that's how they perceive in you right you are a mystery like how you live in your life that's somebody asking it no i'm not asking you that um People want to know, how is you living? How, how are you doing this? What, what are you doing? What's your secret? <laughs> okay, so let's see. What is number the spotted dolphin? Let's read them. So the spotted dolphin says, it lives on the high seas and it predicts high days and holidays are coming to you by invitation. You will hear good news from someone special. Possessing an excellent ability to hear tones and high frequency sound waves, the spotted dolphin intimates that your unspoken thoughts will tele te telepathically influence a soulmate or kindred spirit. Having a small, having small black and white sm spots on its back that mimic the reflection of the sun on the sea surface, and a white underside to camouflage it from below, symbolizes that your call is heard. Although you may be hidden when calling, you receive the answers you want, resulting in sharing happiness together. Yeah, so you are also, like, like I said, people want to be around you. Um, and perhaps some part of you want to be around too. And you are now being able to be in this, you're in this space where you're feeling comfortable enough. Like you're very comfortable with yourself. Okay. Um, and this is a lot to do with gathering, with connecting, you know, a lot about unity and um, having a voice, having this voice of reason towards is a lot about reason, you know, and um, people relating to that. People really relate to you. You, you really uh, make sense to people on a very practical level on a very earthly based level okay and that is a good thing but where it's coming from is a very magical space a very mystical space what else is here it has to do with the way you live like <laughs> you choose success and that success is of spirit wow Okay, so we have the four of six here. So it's definitely some success taking place here. All right, um, a lot of good times, happy feelings, uh, hearing 
Happy Feelings. Who sings that? Frankie Beverly and Mays. Um, maybe that's a song you want to play and vibe out to. All right. Maybe some of y'all, somebody getting pregnant. Somebody here is getting pregnant. Um, maybe something is happening with you that you did not know possible uh, is happening. All right. Or somebody's having a baby even because these people are planning their baby's placenta. She's just giving birth. So, um, and in hoodoo, the tradition goes that when we plant our baby's placentas, um, it brings some prosperity and longevity and goodness to their life for days until, until their end days, you know, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, it's a good time. It's steady. It's, it's, it's constant. It's fruitful. It's happy. It's joyful. It feels good. It feels successful. It feels achieved and attained. Like, you know, you doing doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, living life in the way in which it is that you want to live. And through that, it's bringing you success, right? What, what is it that you desire? You are attaining that through this cycle, all right? You are laying the footing, the footwork for the future, all right? Because they they bury in their baby's placenta for their baby, for the child's future, all right? And there's always something positive in it, and that is to come. And you may already be seeing this, right? You In your mind's eye, at the bottom, you got Miss Ida, who's a high priestess. You may already be of knowing of this. These things may have been revealed to you like in your dreams, um, in communication with spirit, maybe during time of meditation, maybe through, maybe you do divination on your own, that kind of thing. So what else is here for me? For power three. What other messages do you have for what does that show us power three? What else is here? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, yeah, so you have soul forgiveness here. You're coming out of this place of um, no longer feeling like you're not going to do it right, right? Because if you see here, you have shame at the bottom. Right. And shame comes up when you um, are not confident in what you're doing because you're unsure. You feel like somebody's going to say something or that things are going to turn out to not be what it is. Like, in a sense, you shame to failing, really. Right. But you're seeing this very clearly there, that your insight, your intuition, your senses are letting you know what's really real. And through this, you are forgiving yourself. You are forgiving others. Um, and this may have a lot to do with your children. They have a lot to do with children, a lot. Um, because dolphins, for one, they're mammals, but they're known to be very, they have very close bonds with their babies, you know? So this feels very strong. This could just simply be your inner child. Uh, but let's see. Let's get into soul forgiveness. So, Mbo Komu, Mbo Komu, that is her name. She is the element of the earth and she comes from Bantu. Her guidance says, who do you need to forgive? Let it go and reclaim yourself. Forgiveness is a gift of freedom for you. You cannot rush forgiveness. You have to feel it to heal it. Feel the pain, the hurt, the grief, the rage, the despair. Take time with your heart. Forgiveness is a higher vibration frequency that the pain you must allow yourself to feel. Unforgiveness colors your world with lack, mistrust, and resentment. You start to see everything through victim-colored glasses. But forgiveness does not have to include reconciliation. Start with self-forgiveness and say it out loud. I forgive myself with love. Her declaration says, I forgive and free myself. I forgive and free others. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely, like I said, forgiveness taking place, right? Out of perhaps there may have been something 
that didn't go as you wanted it to, especially when it comes to like a, rom a relationship dynamic, okay? Um, but forgiveness is the way to the other side. You, we have to forgive so that we can open ourselves up for what it is that we're trying to receive, whatever that is. Like receiving don't always have to be of like something physical or something monetary. Sometimes it's a very spiritual thing of, um, of receiving. Sometimes it's something we cannot see. What else is here? A lot of fours here. A lot about the home. A lot of feminine energy going on right now. That's come up in both readings before. So we have the seventh house here. So this is definitely about relationships, partnerships, contracts, perhaps maybe some marriage, some justice coming through as well. You know, having clarity and understanding, not blaming, getting out of this space of blame, like just having this. And that's really how we get to the place of, under, of forgiveness. Like you ain't got to blame nobody. You don't have to blame anything. It just is what it is. And it's like take the lesson and move forward with it. Allow things to be what they are so that what is coming can become, you know, so that or even still so you can be. So you can be right here, right now in this moment versus um, being so focused and caught up on the past, right? If it don't feel good, like what's the, what's the purpose in holding on to it? Why haven't you chosen to learn the lesson um, of what something once was, right? That no longer is. What else is here? Somebody could be getting married too. Somebody's probably getting engaged, married, and having a baby. All right, it's just a good time for real. <laughs> feeling really good, feeling really grounded. Maybe with all these fours here, you might want to watch pile one if you didn't, um, because it was a lot about cancer energy in the fourth house. Okay, and it's a lot of motherly energy going on here, a lot of nurturing energy as well, you know, this happiness is coming from the balance, the peace that you choose for yourself, right? You choose to live your life in a way that allows you to be in your peaceful state of mind. And sometimes that comes through forgiveness. And through that forgiveness, you then perhaps have the confidence to be able to embark, enact, be fully in your own personal desires of what it is that you want in your life. Okay. What other messages? So this has everything to do with you being yourself within your relationships. Okay. All right. Three cards came up. Yeah, so the moon is a big factor here for you. It's definitely bringing wealth. You're harvesting. <laughs> You're harvesting here. Because you have the scythe, the pig, and the moon. So what's been hidden is now being harvested. So we're going to shuffle for one card only. What else is here? Really? They're really trying to speak to y'all. Have y'all not been listening? It feels like y'all haven't been listening. Yeah. Somebody hasn't been listening. Somebody hasn't been paying attention. Somebody been too caught up in their mind. Somebody been a little bit delusional about their self. Um, somebody been disappointed and the disappointment has been having them in this space of lack. All right. Um, So this is definitely about your commitments. This is the queen of cups and the stability in your emotions, right? And how you choose to be committed to what it is that you sign up for, the contracts it is that you sign, right? And how you go about feeling about this. Sometimes when we don't forgive like really old things, 
in past relationships, it's really hard to enjoy the relationships we have right in our face. So there's a lot of healing taking place by choosing yourself and um, allowing forgiveness to happen when it comes to the disappointments of the past, right? Because you are moving into a very rich and happy life, right? Getting out your head, like coming out of the space of self-sabotage. You've seen your worth, you've seen your value, you're aligning to your values, you're aligning to your worth. You are living your dreams. You're embracing what your dreams are, being honest with yourself about that, and, and accepting it. Soul forgiveness. Soul forgiveness. So, last card, along with that, we have the scribe of feathers. So, there's cleansing of the mind that's taking place right, of the way in which the mind has been operating. Again, gestation, somebody's pregnant. Gestation came out and I think pile two. And so somebody has a lot of new ideas. Somebody has a lot of, they have some big dreams that they want to follow. And um, if you can't let go of what was, you ain't never going to be able to make these dreams a reality for yourself. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just the ebb and flow of things, the way of the, the frequency I was talking about in pile two. Um, all right, and I guess I can talk about it here too. I was talking about how yesterday me and my husband was having a conversation about how it is that we go about choosing to spend our money, how we how we give it, where we spend it, and all of those things, and what that looks like for where where that makes space for us to be able to spin, like what frequency does that carry us on um, in creating the ability to actually conceptualize what we want, where we want it, how we want it, you know, and this is very much so the same thing. So letting go of what is um, being done from a place of half-assedness, being done from a place of fear, being done from a place of uh, shadow, even right letting that go so you can free yourself from these old wounds that, that has yet to be forgiven whether that is of another from another or just of yourself okay and, and just moving forward and being able because this is going to help you continue to be seen right in your success no matter how big or small this is allowing you to uh, gain the stability, the structure. It is that's needed, but it's a process. It's going to take its time. But within the time being taken, within the step-by-step, -step, things are still going to be moving quickly, okay? So it's pile three, my tiger's eye. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope these messages serve you moving forward in this Taurus new moon energy and i will see you all next time um, you guys can ex expect more videos coming now that i have gotten things in alignment um i did switch up how i'm going to do the seasonal readings so from now on i'm going to start just doing a seasonal pickle card and then whatever signs zodiac signs fall within the realm of that season will be the one to get individual readings so taurus your birthday reading will be coming up very soon and taurus season will be available very soon as well so i'll talk to you guys soon bye